Hi there. Welcome to this video on how to read your Medicare Summary Notice, or MSN for short. Why is this important? Well, Medicare fraud is one of the most rampant forms of fraud in the U.S. It costs taxpayers like you and I $60 billion a year. How do we fix this? We review our or our loved one's MSNs. How does Medicare work exactly? Well, let's say a Medicare recipient, or beneficiary as they are often referred to, needs a checkup. They go to the doctor, the beneficiary gives the doctor their Medicare information and receives the health care they need. Later, someone at the doctor's office bills Medicare and uses the beneficiary's Medicare number to help process the payment for the services they provided. This is called a claim. Medicare then processes the requested payment, reimburses the provider for covered services, and the doctor bills the beneficiary for any leftover out-of-pocket fees. This is a completely legitimate transaction and shows how the system is supposed to work. So how does fraud occur? A scammer might get a hold of someone's Medicare information, either by calling the beneficiary and pretending to be associated with Medicare, or by tricking them in some other way. Then, the scammer bills Medicare fraudulently, claiming they provided a health-related service to the beneficiary. The beneficiary is likely unaware that any of this has taken place. Meanwhile, Medicare, doing its important job, may pay for this claim, believing that it is legitimate. Medicare processes millions of claims every day, and fraud like this puts billions of taxpayer dollars at risk. So how can we fight this type of fraud? That's where you come in. You can stop Medicare fraud in its tracks. You have the power to fight fraud by doing one very easy thing. Simply review your MSN and let the Senior Medicare Patrol, or SMP, know if there are any suspicious looking claims. Before we get started, let's talk about what type of Medicare plan you may have. Around 60% of beneficiaries are enrolled in what is called Original Medicare, while the other 40% are enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan. These two programs provide different Medicare statements. If you are part of Original Medicare, you will receive a Medicare Summary Notice, otherwise known as an MSN. If you are a part of a Medicare Advantage plan, you will receive an Explanation of Benefits, or EOB for short, instead of an MSN. The ability to understand your Medicare statement is crucial for Medicare beneficiaries and or caregivers to catch fraud. In this video, we will show you how to review and understand your MSN. Because each Medicare Advantage plan sends their own EOB, we will not cover how to read those in this video. For questions on how to read your EOB, contact your plan or the SMP for assistance. The MSN shows exactly what healthcare expenses were billed to Medicare and whether Medicare approved or denied each claim. The MSN is not a bill. Though it may contain information about how much money you may be responsible for paying out of pocket, its purpose is to serve as a statement of what claims Medicare has received. The MSN is mailed every three months if a claim has been filed. If no claims are filed during this period, an MSN will not be sent. It is important to understand and regularly review your MSNs, as the sooner you catch any fraud or errors, the better. Let's take a look at some sample MSNs. First, we will review Part A, which focuses on hospital claims, and then Part B, which focuses on medical claims. We'll go over the most important parts of these MSNs, and if you'd like to follow along with your own, please go get them now. During the video, feel free to pause anytime to review your own MSN. Let's get started. Here at the top of the document is the MSN title. This is where it is labeled Part A or B. Here we see the official Department of Health and Human Services or DHHS logo. Below this, we see beneficiary information. On your MSN, this is where your name and information will be displayed. Be sure to check the accuracy of your name and Medicare number. This area shows what time period the statement reflects. 
The deductible status section shows what you must pay before Medicare will start paying. It will either show that you have met the deductible or how much you have paid toward the deductible. This section is where you will see a summary of your approved and denied claims, as well as the total you may be billed. Below this section is where the MSN lists the facilities and healthcare providers who have submitted Medicare claims, as well as the dates when services were provided. For example, we see the fictitious Atero Hospital here. Your MSN will look different and will show the facilities and providers you received healthcare from. Be sure to check this area for accuracy. If you do not recognize a facility in this section, it is important to check with Medicare or the SMP to see if it is a legitimate claim and not an error or instance of fraud. At the top of page two, it will say, Making the most of your Medicare. This page primarily contains directions on how to read the MSN and information on how to report fraud. It's important to mention that certain services like skilled nursing and inpatient hospital stays are limited by a benefit period, which is different from the deductible seen on page one. See the benefits period section to learn how many days are remaining in your benefit period. In the next section, labeled How to Check This Notice, you'll see three questions. Number one, do you recognize the name of each facility? Number two, did you get the claims listed? Number three, if you already paid the bill, did you pay the right amount? Answering these questions will increase the likelihood that any fraud or errors are spotted quickly. This area shows seasonal messages, such as recommendations of when to get a certain vaccination. It also provides a way for you to view information on the MSN virtually, which can be accessed at www.medicare.gov. Page 3 provides a detailed record of claims received during a benefit period. This is where it's important to review which medical services have been received and check for any services that have not been authorized or have been billed by mistake. Saving the healthcare bills you receive can allow you to easily verify claims. For example, if you see a claim for a facility for which you do not have a bill, it's possible this claim could be fraudulent. A common method of fraud is billing someone for services they didn't receive, so this is an important area to focus on when reviewing your MSN. You can also use the My Healthcare Tracker from the SMP to compare dates and services to your MSN. At the topmost portion of page 3, you'll see definitions of columns, which explains many of the terms used on this page. Here, the beneficiary received care from a tarot hospital. The columns show how many benefit days were used, whether the claim was approved, any non-covered charges, the amount Medicare paid, and the maximum amount you may be billed. This area is highlighted to make it easy to see what you could be responsible for paying out of pocket. To reiterate, it is important to make sure you have received all the services listed here. The last column lists any notes for the services you've received. You can view these corresponding notes at the bottom of the page in the Notes section. Regardless of how many pages your MSN contains, the last page always provides information on what to do with denied claims and how you can file an appeal if you disagree with Medicare's decision of coverage for a claim. If you have questions or want to learn more about appeals, reference this section. That's Part A. Now let's move on to Part B. This is a Part B MSN. You'll notice it looks pretty much the same. The big differences are what claims the Part B MSN reflects. To reiterate, reviewing your MSN is important for catching fraud and errors. The first important area to be mindful of is this section, Providers with Claims This Period. You should make sure you recognize every healthcare provider in this section. This is page two of a Part B MSN. You'll notice it's arranged similarly to Part A, but uses terms like doctor or provider instead. This area is the most different. 
Unlike Part A, which referred to benefit periods, here we see information about Medicare preventative services. These services are usually covered 100% by Medicare. Like Part A, at the topmost portion of page 3, you'll see definitions of columns, which explains many of the terms used on this page. Again, you'll see information on the claim submitted, which is similar to how it is arranged on a Part A MSN. Save any bills you receive from providers so you can cross-check them and any information you recorded in your My Healthcare Tracker with the claims on your Part B MSN. Finally, the last page of your Part B MSN contains information on appealing Medicare decisions, which is the same as the last page of a Part A MSN. Reading through your Medicare statements can feel daunting. If you have any questions, call the SMP at 877-808-2468. Each U.S. state, D.C., Guam, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands have an SMP program. Ultimately, the most important purpose of the MSN is to give you a record of every facility or provider making claims on your behalf. Armed with that knowledge, you now have the power to prevent, detect, and report Medicare fraud, errors, and abuse. Medicare fraud costs taxpayers $60 billion every year. But by taking the time every few months to review your MSN, you can help fight fraud. To learn more, visit www.medicare.gov.